Welcome back friends. Let us go ahead with a discussion on revitalization and repositioning. We talked about reinforcement, we talked about extension and many interesting elements in between while using examples which could suggest that how it is done, why the need of such things or such steps get evolved that is that is the most important part. And then while discussing these uh, aspects, these strategies should I say, uh, I, I sometimes wonder that should I be using the term strategy for uh, you know when, when you say re, uh, brand revitalization because if I say strategy then a dilemma comes to my mind and it is an it is a thought process which I am sharing with you that because strategy is a well thoughtful path we have to take for a longer longer term technically uh, or, or let us say fundamentally and, and then we have talked about brand architecture. So, if we have a robust architecture in our minds then should we be thinking in terms of a need of revitalization someday? Yes, we have to and, and strategy does not mean that it is a fixed path basically. There are so many external forces, there are so many external elements which keep on coming our way and that is the intelligence of uh, marketers or brand managers who actually foresee those, adjust their pathway and then you know go for extending their benefits and uh, developing equity or further strengthening equity and, and or, or should I say multiplying that. So, that is that is uh, an important element which we must keep in mind at this stage. Let us see what brand revitalization is all about. So, you see in virtually every product category there are examples of once prominent and admired brands that have fallen on hard times or gone through hard times, tougher times and may have completely disappeared also. So, so but name definitely would be resonant you know some somewhere you know it, it is still alive in many cases. So, but, but products or brand in that form is not there anymore. So, now some of these brands managed to they, they managed to turn around. I, I talked about product uh, turnaround or revitalization earlier. Here is brand revitalization. There is as a consonance between these two. Uh, in, in product revitalization, there can be so much which can be done in terms of product innovation, uh, you know, and, and uh, technological infusion and, and uh, putting up strength in terms of uh, you know marketing program and those kind of things go. But when you say that product has a name which has a diminishing trend, I will be talking about this in BLC as well briefly, but again which has a diminishing name that means somehow the trust just, just let us focus on trust. So, somehow the trust is uh, you know is being lost somehow you, you, the it, there is a reduction in terms of trust. So, if somehow it is going on then how to revitalize that and that is where this is actually in relation to revitalization of that trust element. So, now some of these brands for example, Reader's Digest they, they did it well actually. So, so they, they were going well then somehow you know the, the uh, that there was a fluctuation, but they did well, Kelvinator for example, we have seen that and, and uh, you know uh, I have taken this from a source Andrew D brand revitalization and extension uh, brands uh, page 184 to 195. So, so this is the name of the source from where we have uh, taken uh, you know these examples and the details. Now, brands sometimes have to return to their roots to recapture lost source of equity as the author says. Now, brand revitalization is a strategy to recapture lost sources of brand equity and identity and establish new sources of brand equity. It is interesting actually because we have been focusing upon uh, you know uh, sort of strengthening the sources 
identifying you know, first identification and then strengthening the sources of brand equity. So, that is that is uh, the, the point of that has been the point of concern for us. But here when we are trying to revitalize the trust obviously, we have to look for that what were those factors which created that kind of or that that uh, or, or that uh, level of a trust uh, amongst our customers. So, there uh, is the focus point that is uh, you know focusing upon the sources which generated a brand the, the brand equity we enjoyed and finding newer ways to revitalize those sources or new sources of brand equity. This may include product modification or brand repositioning uh, at large and I will be talking about repositioning uh, later on. Brands on comeback trail need revolutionary changes rather than evolutionary changes actually as the author says. So, brands most likely to respond to revitalization efforts are those that have clear and relevant values that have been left dormant for a for some time they still have lot of brand equity left in them and that is where valuation comes in that is where judgment factor comes in that is where you know understanding what customer thinks in terms of our brand that comes in that is where the whole lot of uh, you know I, I would not reiterate we have gone through several kinds of cycle and pyramidical and, and structural uh, you know uh, kind of uh, concepts and, and uh, uh, that is where that understanding comes uh, to support us. So, and that, that makes us understand uh, what is the kind of brand equity we had what do we have and what kind of a potential in terms of gaining brand equity we have. So, that is how revitalizing deals with such brands which are old, but if redirected may have plenty of life. This can be substantially less costly and risky than introducing a new brand and again every time we are thinking in terms of reinforcement, revitalization, repositioning. One thought which is accompanying us all together is related to the fact that because the name has been living, although probably that name would have lost financial value associated with it, but it has been living that is it, it persists in the minds of the customers. There is an emotional aspect to it, there is a loyalty aspect to it as far as the name goes. And that is where you know this this loyalty perspective comes in. So, if if it is there and uh, we are to judge that if it is there, then it's better to go for that. It is better. And then since the time of expansion, we have been thinking in terms of this kind of a choice. Should we be going for everything new, or should we be thinking in terms of uh, utilizing the strength of the name, the brand, the equity we have? So whichever way even if it, it is there just in the form of the name and it has lost its equity in terms of value or financial value for that matter, definitely still it is an asset. So, I, I would not go into the accounting details of how it is, but, but still you know we must remember that at this juncture of a choice, it is important for us to think of our brand this way. Now, as in case of uh, you know reinforcement strategies, let us look at revitalization strategies. Uh, first aspect is refresh old sources of brand equity. Associated element is create new sources of brand equity. So, there are two, two aspects to it and when we look at them with, with combined element, okay, let us retain the old sources and refresh them while creating new sources of brand equity. We go for two aspects more, two, two, uh, two elements more, expand depth and breadth of awareness of usage of brand. Depth and breadth we have talked about earlier in terms of product also and in terms of uh, you know uh, product brand matrix also. So, and again the second element is improving the strength, favorability and uniqueness of brand associations. Similar kind of context was observable in reinforcement strategies as well, but here revitalization that is bringing it back is, is the, the point of concentration. So, 
in terms of expansion of breadth and uh, depth and uh, expansion of uh, depth and breadth of awareness and usage of brand there are two elements more increase quantity of consumption that is how much and the second is increase frequency of consumption how often and then in case of improving the strength favorability and uniqueness of brand association there are three elements bolster fading associations neutralize negative associations and it's it's important neutralizing negative associations and creating new associations it's not that technical basically we are trying to you know revitalize a name along with its connotation and the product it would represent now or it would have represented till now so either we are bringing the product in a similar kind of a form or we are changing something in the product constitution composition but we are living up with the name basically so definitely we have to think in terms of creating new associations and neutralizing negative associations and that can be done through marketing program designing marketing program wherein uh, product management integrated marketing communication management pricing management and you know place management in terms of distribution management has to be a point of uh, concern for us so so we have to structurally think of that and then when we talk of increasing the frequency of consumption so it again traverses into two uh, aspects wherein identify additional opportunities to use brand in same basic way as it had been and then identify completely new and different ways to use brand and then in terms of you know the other three elements of bolstering fading associations neutralizing negative associations and creating new associations combined all three three four elements emanate from there that is retaining vulnerable customers recapturing lost customers identifying neglected segments and attracting new customers it's strategic it's action based it's it it can be systematic so that is where we are reaching we are we are revitalizing through systematic efforts java is a wonderful example for all of this it's a motorcycle you all know it's back on the streets now and you would find riders enjoying the same kind of a pleasure which it used to give long time back so so you know we we find this 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 is this as a living example in terms of revitalization now different avenues of brand revitalization identifying additional or new usage opportunities for example make the use easier indulekha oil indica hair dye shampoo then provide incentives then there can be an element of you know position for frequent oblique regular usage for example clinic shampoo and sachet we have talked about earlier as well you know the the shampoos in sachets even hair oil in sachets that that has been a very uh, good uh, you know strategic progression in terms of as far as uh, not specifically in terms of revitalization but that was again uh, you know uh, a marketing uh, strategy increase the quantity use you know insurance customers reminded to cover more items or insurance getting associated with mutual funds and so on entering new markets and new target segments is also you know an avenue the target market for a particular brand may not comp comprise of all the market segments if the firm may not have other brands for these target market segments then they become potential areas for the brand to expand for example lg entered to portable ac market small refrigerators and so on and van husen to women clothing as such so so that and there can be several such examples in due course of time if you try to find so but but again the point is that here we are trying to talk about examples related to entering new markets and new target segments then comes in you know uh, again talking of different avenues of brand revitalization 
identifying new and completely different ways to use the brand. For example, Milkmaid Mayonnaise. So Milkmaid definitely has done a wonderful job and, and you see that is uh, the intelligence of brand managers who uh, somehow you know find those avenues kind of repositioning the brand. A common problem for marketers of established mature brands is to make them more contemporary by creating relevant usage situations, a more contemporary user profile or a more modern brand personality. Updating a brand may require some combination of new products, new advertising, new promotions and new packaging. For example, Brill Cream Gel was launched, a clear gel with newer packaging to impress younger audience and here when I am talking of brand revitalization avenues, I have mentioned repositioning. So, but I will be talking about repositioning altogether, you know, in a, in a fresh mode. But remember, this is a constituent part of part of this. So, here I must add to this uh, discussion that reinforcement, revitalization, repositioning may have an overlap in terms of marketing programs or let us say strategic orientation and many times actions and activities or one may constitute as a part you know one may be a constituent part of the other in terms of strategy. Then again there is another avenue for brand revitalization changing brand elements. One or more brand elements are changed either to convey new information for example you uh, slightly you know reorient the slogan so for example to convey new information or to signal that the brand has taken on new meaning because the product or some other aspect of the marketing program has changed brand name is typically the most important brand element it is easier to change other brand elements especially if they play an important awareness or image function and many a times people start from slogans and if slogans are you know the reason for brand extension then you may not get away from those for example thanda thanda cool cool so you would not uh, be willing to go away from that so easily so you may think in terms of other elements and so on now then there is an avenue in terms of you know uh, retiring the brands now first step in retrenching a fading brand is to reduce the number of its product types this reduces the cost of supporting the brand and allows it to concentrate on its strengths so it can more easily hit profit targets and so on. So there are an aspect, uh, there, there is an aspect of you know retiring uh, a portion of uh, the products being represented by that brand. It does not mean that brand has to be retired somehow. But, but again this is one of the avenues which is a constituent part of revitalization as such. So you see uh, uh, there is a plant and uh, there is a leaf which is wilting so you just pluck it off probably in, in a similar kind of a fashion although it is very hard it is very tough. And then you know there are elements of adjusting the brand portfolio. There is a brand migration strategy as an avenue. It helps consumers understand how various brands in the portfolio can satisfy their needs as they change over time or as the products and brands themselves change over time. For example, IBM created its iconic ThinkPad brand and advertising employed both the IBM and Lenovo logos with IBM in the lead. However, by the end of the two year migration, the IBM name was removed making room for Think in ThinkPad to transfer IBM's brand equities to Leno. So this is uh, how in a transitory manner it was done brand migration strategy. Acquiring new customers is again you know a constituent avenue. Firms must proactively develop strategies to attract new customers especially younger ones. The marketing challenge lies in making a brand seem relevant to vastly different generations and cohort groups or lifestyles. Challenge is greater when the brand has a strong personality. Some marketers have attempted to cut loose from the past to deal with marketing across generations for example Tommy Hilfiger. So these are examples taken from text basically but again there are many observations which authors have made in due course of time. So and then 
although it, it, it is easier easily said that you know that, that was that you know uh, the attempt was to cut it loose but but uh, believe me for marketing uh, managers brand managers people who live with the brands themselves it is very difficult for uh, them to shelve off the names they have been nurturing the the brand values which have been which they have been nurturing and i have been time and again uh, associating value with values so value with s now parker pens is a wonderful example of revitalization and it's one of my favorites they brought in mr bachchan and they sort of revitalized that while repositioning it and i use repositioning as an avenue in revitalization in my earlier discussion so just think in terms of parker pens and you would realize that it was a high priced pen earlier but then they you know uh, re uh, you know vitalized the whole target segment in terms of uh, the 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 range of pens uh, they have and then they re rationalized the prices according to the target segment they repositioned that while bringing in mr bachchan on uh, in far as, uh, as far as their integrated marketing communication goes and that is how they rejuvenated the whole scenario so now probably they are reinforcing themselves and so on let's talk of brand repositioning at this juncture brand positioning has been defined by professor philip kotler as the act of designing the company's offering and image to occupy a distinctive place in the mind of target market this we have taken from philip kotler and kevin lane keller marketing management 15th edition pearson although one more edition after this has come up now uh, whereas brand repositioning in simple words is the act of intentionally switching the way your brand is perceived by customers if customers already have an opinion about your brand brand repositioning is how you adjust perceptions so they better reflect your brand's true mission style promise and purpose the point here is and i have talked about this earlier it's a difficult thing to do you know re you see look at the definition of positioning wherein designing the company's offering and image to occupy a distinctive place in the mind of the target market and now you want to actually you know reposition or you you create you want to create a new distinctive place for that matter somehow so there can be a continuum in terms of positioning and repositioning in terms of you know the distinction you want to dismantle and create a a new distinction that that can be but it is a very difficult thing believe me so there are rationals for brand repositioning the you know for example the the earlier execution was poorly conceived can often be identified by measures of consumer interest brand association sales you you have attempted to position somehow it has not been working you tried it for for a long time somehow it has not been working so so you want to reposition it's a logical thing here it would not be so difficult to dismantle that that original positioning because you actually would like to do that and customer would not dislike that so so that is that is a point but if customer would dislike that then it would be difficult point so the the target of uh, identity oblique execution is limited may need to change to reach a broader market and then the third element is uh, you know the identity and execution has booking out of date that that is markets change such that a working position may become obsolete so that is again uh, you know a sort of rational for brand repositioning so up till this stage customer would not dislike it and then the identity or execution loses its edge becomes old fashioned now here there are many loyal customers whose hard would be broken if you want to reposition the product so that is a very delicate kind of thing to be done actually because you do you would not like to lose your brand ambassadors who have been actually promoting your product for ages now 
So, just because you know your product is becoming old fashioned, so it, it is better probably to work upon innovation of the product and innovation of the marketing pro, uh, process and to re strengthen you know reinforce your positioning probably or revitalize your positioning probably, but repositioning here might not be so easily acceptable by the customer. So, here consumers and markets change such that you know positions of, uh, uh, and, uh, or executions that were once contemporary became less so, but that should not be the only motivating factor to do that. Then there is another uh, you know rationale which says that the identity and execution has just become tired. Now, same uh, uh, you know uh, over time may become boring to consumers losing ability to attract attention. Here also even if it is boring uh, you know getting uh, boring for the customers to use the same product time and again with the same kind of a brand orientation and brand positioning perspective, but you have to find out why it is happening. And probably before repositioning, you must try reinforcement, revitalization, and so on. And much before that, you should foresee when that kind of a stagnation in the thoughts of the customers would come because you very well understand you know the substitutes and alternatives which are coming your way, or let us say the kind of life cycle progression or our growth uh, your brand is going through. So, one one must you know foresee that and that is what brand management is all about actually. So, here I wish to imply that brand repositioning uh, you know should not be a desirable kind of uh, an, an aspect basically. Basic. It, it, if you are foreseeing well, if you are working well, if you are planning well, then definitely there are so many aspects. Uh, you know which you should be thinking in terms of uh, as far as the whole scenario goes. Uh, there are several kinds of orientations associated with repositioning for example, value oriented uh, repositioning, segment oriented repositioning. Uh, then uh, you know there is an element of brand enhancement and segment oriented repositioning, there is a niche oriented repositioning. And you know there is a change of image associated repositioning, uh, you know, and, and for for several kinds of uh, expressions or researches which have been done on these, there are several authors who have written on this. So there are you know, the textbook which we have been referring to, and for example, there is a good paper which you can refer uh, for for uh, several kinds of repositionings for that matter is uh, Kumar SR 2003 Branding Strategies in a Changing Marketing Environment published in the Journal of Brand Management. It is a good paper, so you, you will find you know these descriptions over there as well. But here the most important element as far as uh, the repositioning scenario goes uh, which I want to summarize in terms of example, examples should I say. Uh, is that repositioning if it has to be done must be done with a perspective that neither the sentiments of the older customers should be heard nor the belief of the future customer about what your brand meant should be dismantled because ultimately we are thinking in terms of brand loyalty and brand equity. You see rejuvenating sales is not the only objective when we thinking think in terms of brand management. Generating brand equity, brand loyalty and subsequently the sales associated with all the products associated with that particular brand is the main important key. And, and as I said I would be using examples to uh, you know summarize or express this culmination which I have just mentioned in front of you. For example, Gillette. 
Now, Gillette, when came up with Gillette Guard, they sort of repositioned themselves without saying that they are repositioning themselves. And that is that is an important thing, you see. Did we realize that? No. They retained their older customers or sentiments of the older customers and did not dismantle the belief of the customers which they have gained now that they are Gillette. And that is where branding intelligence comes in. For example, KFC. KFC went for wedge offerings in Gujarat. That's that's an that's an interesting thing basically. And Bata, they have revitalized themselves, repositioned themselves. And it's a whole lot of a story, Bata has come up in a big way now. IBM, we all know, I have just mentioned that. Asian Paints, they have sort of converted themselves into a paint solutions company rather than just a paint company. They are now a companion in terms of, you know, uh, should I say, painting your houses, painting your properties. Star TV, they entered, they established, then they made inroads into the roots of our country. Lufthansa, they have done it successfully, KLM has done it successfully, and there can be n number of examples on that. I am leaving you with this thought and will be coming back to you in my last segment, last two sessions. One of those would be focused on aspect of rebranding. As I said, demise or death of brands and why it should not happen, how we may uh, not let it happen along with a conceptual framework or discussion on brand life cycle and after that I will be summarizing whole lot of the discussion which we have gone through through a larger case or an example to emphasize or establish the relationship of all the elements which we have gone through in due course of time. It would become more interesting in the last two sections. Keep going along. I will be seeing you back. Goodbye.